I could do a list of all the lists I do at the end of each year and rank them in the order of my favorite ones to do. No, that'd be taking it a little too far, wouldn't it? Yeah. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, continuing my week-long list blitz, otherwise known as Tom's 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. And today I will be bringing you two lists that you won't see on anybody else's YouTube channel because these are the lists that are connected to my monthly features that I show on my channel, uh, Backtracks and Bargain Bag. So yes, in a few minutes here I will be talking about my top 10 favorite Backtracks Spotlight albums that I reviewed each month on my Backtracks feature. But for now, I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite Bargain Bag CDs. Now to clarify, I'm not uh, talking about the CDs that I review in the middle of my Bargain Bag feature each month. I'm talking about actually the CDs that I take out of each of the CD grab bags. So these are the top 10 amongst the favorites uh, buried audio treasures that I found in amongst my bargain bags. Uh, yes, I opened 24 bargain bags this year, uh, seven CDs in each bag. That brings us to a total of 168 CDs, or actually 167 if you exclude the empty case of Sting's Sacred Love CD. Uh, thanks a lot, Skip. Uh, and anyway, I actually went through and tallied. I kept 33 of the CDs that I uncovered out of those 168, which equals 1.8% of the CDs that I opened. So that's not a whole lot, you know, but hey, considering the amount that I paid for all these uh, mystery CD grab bags, hey, it, it was a small price to pay for the music that I discovered and added to my collection. Uh, now, I actually broke it down month by month, and turns out July and September were the most successful bargain bag months. I actually actually kept five CDs out of the bargain bags for each of those two months. One of those was a single in July, so it was one single and four albums in July, and September it was actually five full CD albums. And actually, uh, by contrast, March and August were the least successful. Uh, in March I only kept one of the albums that I got out of my bargain bag, and in August I only kept one of the singles that I got. So. It varies from month to month, and that's one of the things that's most enjoyable about doing the bargain bag feature is, like Forrest Gump said, you never know what you're going to get. And unfortunately, I just realized I did not write down the months that I discovered each of these CDs. I probably should have done that. Uh, I, I'll remind myself to do that in the coming year for 2020, so I'll give you a much more accurate uh, breakdown of what I got. Anyway, so let's just jump right on in and count down my top 10 favorite bargain bag discoveries of 2019. Number 10 is a jazz CD. It was by Mark Maxwell. It's called And I Love Her. It's got a whole bunch of covers of various popular songs. Uh, the title track, which was a uh, Burt Bacharach song. Uh, Spooky, which is an old standard. I can't remember who wrote that. You've Got a Friend by Carol King. Uh, Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. I mean, it's just a fantastic album of excellent arrangements of these songs. Uh, yeah, I have uh, have yet to actually go and explore and see if Mark Maxwell has put out any other albums, but I really should be doing that. Uh, yeah, so that was, it was one in one of the early months this year, uh, one of the first real jewels that I found in 2019. Number nine is one of the more recent ones. I think this was in October or September. Uh, Fritz Reynold and the Bostonian Friends. It's an album called Starlight. And uh, this also was a jazz or big band. It kind of straddles the line between jazz and big band uh, album. Uh, very very nice arrangements on all these. Some uh, covers of standards and stuff and some original compositions. So yes, uh, very nice, very enjoyable CD. I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to say about all of these because I don't want the video to be too long. And uh, if you want me to go, to go into any of these more in depth, let me know in the comments section below. I would be happy to. Number eight in my countdown is a uh, an indie rock CD by a group called Moan. It's called The Debut. For some reason, I just wasn't expecting something because of the packaging. I don't know why. Just kind of a preconception I have, I guess. But it turned out to be a very pleasant surprise. Very, very nice, tuneful, and uh, hooky, and, and great indie rock. Just a, a great, great thing. So uh, check out Moan if you haven't yet. Number seven is actually, this is kind of an unusual one because this is one that I actually owned before. Uh, and got rid of because I, I had gotten tired of it. And so I was fully expecting to just get rid of it uh, when it turned up in one of my bargain bags. But, And I think I actually said that I was going to at the time I filmed the recap that this CD was in, you know, the month after I opened it. But, you know, I have a soft spot for these old songs. They're kind of cheesy pop, you know, turn of the millennium pop songs. 
but for some reason I just got nothing but fond memories when I re-listened to this album, so I decided to keep it. It is Introducing Michael Frito by Michael Frito. Uh, yes, as I said, you know, very turn of the millennium, teen pop sort of stuff. Think In Sync or Backstreet Boys, that kind of thing. So, hey, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, check out Michael Frito. Yeah. My number six favorite bargain bag CD of the year is a uh, rock band with uh, a little bit of a Latin twist, which only stands to reason when I tell you their name. Uh, their name actually looked familiar when I read it on the CD case, and it turns out that they had a couple of minor hits in the early 90s. Uh, but I like them, and I've uh, wanted to look for their other album I haven't yet. It's kind of on my long-term shopping list. I'll probably do that in the new year. Anyway, the name of the band is Nuclear Valdez, and the album is called Dream Another Dream. Very, very good, uh, as I said, uh, indie rock with a little bit of a Latin twist, and uh, most of the band members, most or all of the band members, are Latino, which makes for an interesting uh, album. So, but yeah, uh, very, very, very good stuff. Very, uh, very good. I, I decided to keep it. What the heck? And it's, it's in my top ten, so there you go. Number five on my list is actually a genre that is, uh, or subgenre that is relatively new to me. It's acid jazz which I'd never really checked out before, and uh, this first taste of it is kind of making me want to check out more of it. Uh, this is an album called Out of Here by an artist named Corduroy. Very, very cool stuff. Kind of kind of funky, kind of, uh, you know, it, it's off the beat math. It's a little unusual, uh, which, yeah, as I said, you know, acid jazz is something that I'd never really checked out before, but yeah. Very, very good stuff, so check out Corduroy if you haven't yet. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I found this uh, lurking in my bargain bags this year. Up next on my list is a singer-songwriter, pop-rock kind of guy. Uh, I found him mid to late part of the year. I want to say September or maybe October was when I f uh, uncovered his CD in a bargain bag. And his name is Joe DeJesu, and the album is called Instant Gratification. It's very, very good, as I said, uh, singer-songwriter, pop-rock type of stuff. Very hooky sounds. I actually, um, the first time I listened to this album, I was just, it just would, did not impress me at all, and I almost put it in the uh, goodwill pile without giving it a second listen, but uh, on the second and third listens, I just turned right around, did a t total 180, and just fell in love with this guy's stuff. I need to, he's another one where I need to uh, check out online and see if he's put out any other albums, because yeah, very, very good stuff. Joe DeJesu, Instant Gratification. Great album. Number three on my list is an Electronica EDM kind of thing. It's, it was really cool, and this is another one that uh, just I was not expecting much when I looked at the uh, the CD case. Just it looked kind of you know one of those rinky dink uh, fly by night cheapo record labels, but it turned out to be very very interesting and fun listening. It is an artist named Snowcone, and the album is called Stay at Home Rockstar. So yeah, it has a lot of electronic elements uh, in it, and uh, yes, yeah, just very very good, very catchy, fun stuff. What can I say? List week has been hard on me, so I've not been able to really elaborate much on the content of albums. But uh, yeah, go online, see if you can find Snow Cone, and uh, give them a listen. Just just great electronica type stuff. Just fascinating. Okay, now my runner up for favorite bargain bag CD discovery of the year is a pop artist, and I believe, if I remember correctly, this was the first CD I got out of the first bargain bag back in January. And yeah, she just she struck me right away with her interesting sound and, and, and fun hooky arrangements, and I've uh, meant to look... I, I've gone on browsing to see if I can find her other CDs. I just haven't gotten around to ordering them yet. But anyway, yes, uh, Stella Soleil and her album Dirty Little Secret is my number two favorite bargain bag CD discovery of the year. Just great, uh, yeah, as I said, just great uh, pop artistry. Uh, 2001 is when the album was released, so, but she's not, I would hesitate to lump her in with the Christina Aguilera's and Britney Spears's of the time. She just had something unique about her, something a little bit more pop, maybe a little bit more toward, oh, pink, maybe not, not, not quite as rocky as pink, but, uh, you know, just, just, just something different, and it, it caught my ear. What can I say? It, it's my number two. But now on to my number one absolute favorite bargain bag CD discovery of 2019. Uh, I've talked about this one a couple of times already, and I actually went out and looked for and found their debut album. This was their second album, is the one that was in the uh, bargain bag. It is Real McCoy and their sophomore album, One More Time. That is my number one favorite bargain bag CD of the year. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, I talked about them a little bit in in my wrap-up for, for that bargain bag. Uh, they're kind of like um, 
ace of base so i mean i guess you know to put it bluntly they're an ace of base ripoff but not really i mean it, they've got you know they've got something different to them I, i'm not sure what it is I, I haven't been able to pin it down yet but if you like ace of base check these guys out they're, they're, they're just excellent they're not to be missed uh yeah their, their debut album is just as good as their sophomore album so yeah give real mccoy a try they're fantastic well, I hope you enjoyed that list of my top 10 favorite bargain bag CD discoveries of 2019. I had a whole lot of fun doing bargain bag, and uh, I've, as I've told you before, I think I've got enough uh, mystery CD grab bags that I picked up from Skips ahead of time before they closed uh, to carry my bargain bag feature through to the end of 2021. So, uh, hey, here's to finding a lot more CD dis discoveries in the coming two years, and let's enjoy bargain bag while it lasts. I certainly will. So let's get on from that list and go into my top 10 favorite Backtrack Spotlight albums of 2019. Yes, I bought uh, quite a few more uh, vinyl albums uh, this year than I did last year. Uh, last year I only did, I believe it was 12, maybe 14, somewhere between 12 and 14 Spotlight albums. I neglected to write it down. I should do that. I should keep statistics for every year going forward. I really should. Uh, but uh, this year I actually ended up buying and spotlighting 25 vinyl albums in my Backtracks feature. Uh, I only did one album in January and December each month, uh, but the rest of the months I did at least two, and actually in, I believe it was July, I did three, and in September or August I went completely nuts and did four. So uh, yeah, 25 altogether, and uh, I did a little number crunching on this, and uh, the most popular year for my Backtrack Spotlight albums was actually a tie between 1974 and 1979. Uh, seven albums from each of those years ended up in, uh, amongst my Spotlight albums. But I decided to whittle down and uh, give you my ten favorite listening experiences in regards to Backtrack Spotlight albums for the year of 2019. And I'm going to be going through these albums relatively quickly because uh, in each of my Backtracks videos I actually did reviews on these albums so you can hear my thoughts if you're so inclined. Uh, check out those respective videos. I will mention each month that I spotlight these albums in so you can go back and uh, watch my reviews of them if you like. Uh, so kicking off the list at number 10 was an album from September. It was actually released in September of 1969, 50 years ago this year. It is Rock and Roll by Vanilla Fudge. That was just a, a great album. Uh, I, I had underestimated or uh, underappreciated Vanilla Fudge before I listened to this album, uh, as is the case with most of these artists. Um, a lot of these, uh, oftentimes, these are my first full album experiences with each of these artists. So, uh, yeah, and I guess I don't really need to say that these albums were fantastic because they're in my top ten. Duh. But anyway, yes, Vanilla Fudge, Rock and Roll. It was a September Spotlight album. Excellent stuff. Check it out. Uh, number nine was actually, and it the notoriety of this artist, it, it might seem a little strange that I'm charting him, uh, ranking him solo on my list, but there were just other albums that just spoke to me more this year. Uh, this was a January Spotlight, or, or actually the January Spotlight album from this year. It is Armed Forces by Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Yes, uh, one of my favorite songs of theirs is uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, and that is on this album. It's on the American pressing of this album. Uh, so yeah, that was a treat, and uh, what were some of the other... Uh, uh, Oliver's Army is another very, very good one. Uh, Goon Squad, <laughs> that's a good one, too. So, uh, yeah, uh, very nice listen. Uh, check out, well, I'm sure most of you have checked out Elvis Costello and the Attractions, but uh, if you haven't listened to Armed Forces yet, give it a listen. Very, very good album. Uh, number eight on my list was back in May, and this is another very high-profile album that you might be uh, scuffing or shaking your head, scratching your head as to why it's so low, but... As I said with Elvis Costello, it's just more al other albums spoke to me uh, more strongly this year. But still, this is a very, very good album. Excellent album. It is Tommy by The Who, their double album rock opera. Excellent stuff. Uh, it was, I believe, my first full album exposure to The Who. I could be wrong about that, but uh, yeah. And it was uh, uh, featured in one of my favorite movies, uh, Almost Famous. So yeah, that, that was another reason that I had to try it out this year. But yeah, very, very good, very good album. Excellent album. Number seven on my list is actually my most recent Spotlight album. It is the one album I reviewed in my December backtrack, so just a few weeks ago. It is Vulture Culture by the Alan Parsons Project. And uh, one of the things that made this one stand out is that there are five lead vocalists amongst the eight album tracks. And actually, well, think about it, it's actually seven because one of them is an instrumental. So 
that makes it that's just one of the things that makes it a very interesting listen uh, a lot of good songs on here so check out this one Number six on my list is an album that I spotlit back in my July backtracks, and it uh, actually turned 50 years old this year as well, July of 1969. It is the original Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. And the thing that I really liked about this one is uh, the, the blend of genres that they had on here. They put a little bit of jazz, a little bit of country, a little bit of blues, and a little bit of pop, just all sorts of stuff mixed together. And they had a pretty darn neat roster of guest artists on here, Jim Keltner, Leon Russell, Rita Coolidge, I mean, just the list goes on. And uh, yeah, just a, a very, very good album. Excellent. My, uh, again, as with most of the artists, as I said, my first full exposure to Delaney and Bonnie Bramlett. So yeah, wonderful album. Go check it out. My number five Backtrack Spotlight album of the year was in my August edition. It is AWB by The Average White Band. Yeah, This is another artist that I... Uh, had the wrong impression of at the beginning. I just assumed that they were a totally instrumental band, and just for some reason, just all of their big hit singles happen to be instrumentals. And they actually have some great vocal songs on here too. Uh, just I, I couldn't tell you off the bat. Well, as I said, uh, go watch my uh, individual month reviews. I, I go more in depth on these albums in there. And this one was from uh, August, as I said. Fantastic album. I, I gained a new respect for the average white band. Uh, when I listen to this album, I intend to seek out more of their stuff. So yeah, it is my number five favorite Backtrack Spot on the album of the year. And now for number four. This is quite possibly the highest profile one that I did this year. I don't know, maybe, maybe Tommy is a little bit higher profile by The Who. But uh, yeah, it is uh, Tusk by Fleetwood Mac. It is my number four uh, favorite Spotlight album this year. Uh, I reviewed it back in October. Uh, so yeah, it was just a fantastic album. What can I say? Uh, and yes, some of you Fleetwood Mac aficionados might be uh, surprised or disappointed that it's ranked number four and not number one or number two, but uh, hey, as I've said a few times already in this countdown, other albums just spoke to me more and, and had, had more uh, catchy and song, songs that stuck with me, I guess. But yeah, the, the title track, Tusk, is just one that's not to be missed. It's one of my favorite Fleetwood Mac songs ever. But yeah, the, the album was definitely a, a rewarding listen. I really enjoyed listening to this one, so yeah. Number three on my list is uh, probably the most different one on the list, and uh, in a way that's one reason why it's ranked so high. It's just, it was one of the most amazing and relaxing and beautiful and comfortable listens I had all year long, uh, not just in terms of Backtrack Spotlight albums, but overall listening. It's just a gorgeous album. I don't know why it took me so long to discover its, its gentle charms. Uh, it is the perfect album to put on uh, if, if you've had a stressful day, a, a hectic day and whatnot. But anyway, it is Getz Gilberto by Stan Getz and Joao Gilberto. Uh, I reviewed this one back in March, and uh, Joao Gilberto actually passed away in August, I think it was, July or August, so it was actually after I reviewed this album. So I, I believe, I, I, I could be wrong about that, but yeah. This is just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous album. You have to listen to it, especially if you're in the mood for something that will relax you and uh, help ease your stress, and it is just the perfect remedy for that. So yeah, give this one a listen. Don't miss out on this one. And now here comes my runner-up for favorite Backtrack Spotlight album of the year. Considering the ones that I've already mentioned that are lower in the countdown, this one might seem a little odd to you. Uh, I, hope you I hope you're not offended by it, but hey, I'm an 80s kid. And this one was released back in August of 1984, so I review it in my August backtracks. It is Phantoms by The Fix. What can I say? Uh, just a, a bunch of great, great songs on here bring back a lot of memories. Uh, Less Cities, More Moving People is probably my favorite song on here. Another great one's called Are We Ourselves. And just, yeah, just a lot of just fantastic uh, catchy rhythms and uh, melodies and great lyrics on here. Just a fantastic album. It is not to be missed, and neither is The Fix's previous album, Reach the Beach. Another great, great one. Check out The Fix if you haven't yet. They are one of the uh, less appreciated artists from the 1980s. So yeah, definitely. This is this one's a winner. Well, technically it's not a winner because it wasn't number one. Uh, yes, number one is had to be reserved for a very, very special and very, very unique listen. I mean, Gets Gilberto was a unique listen, but this one takes the cake. This one is not for relaxing, let's put it that way. And uh, those of you who might have kept a record of my Backtrack Spotlight albums, you might know what's coming here. This was one of my March albums, and actually along with Gets Gilberto, uh, which were, those were the two albums that I reviewed in March. So 
Uh, March was absolutely by far the winning month for backtracks this year. Anyway, my number one favorite backtrack spotlight album is Shake Your Booty by Frank Zappa. It's just fantastic. Uh, the number of genres he puts in here, he crams into this double album, is just ridiculous. And it is just an adventurous listen. If you've got adventurous ears, listen to this album. Do not pass up this album. It is just an absolute roller coaster of a listen. A, a lot of funny, funny songs on here, but uh, there are a lot of lyrics in here that have uh, double meanings and are very keenly written satire. So it, there's not just, you know, hilarity on here like Weird Al silliness. There's a lot of satire and very pointed commentaries and, and whatnot in the lyrics. And other ones are just, as I said, just for silly fun. But yeah, Frank Zappa, Shake Your Booty is an absolutely fantastic album. I will definitely have fun checking out the other albums in his discography. I still haven't had a chance to do that yet. But uh, yeah, this is an absolute winner in every sense of the word. So yeah, check out Shake Your Booty by Frank Zappa. That is my number one favorite Backtrack Spotlight album of the year. So, well, I hope you enjoyed these two lists, giving you the cream of the crop for my Backtracks and Bargain Bag features for the past year of 2019. Uh, yes, I've had so much fun doing both of them uh, each, each month. Uh, Backtracks is a lot of work to put together, but it's always fun. It's always rewarding to uh, see the finished product and to uh, get it out to you and get to get your reactions on it. It's so much fun. And also to... Uh, explore new albums, uh, well, new to me albums, on vinyl uh, that I've never heard before, and I never know when I'm going to find something truly amazing and remarkable. And, well, the same goes for uh, for Bargain Bag. I mean, you know, goodness knows I come up with a lot of uh, interesting stuff out of those bags. That's, I guess that's the diplomatic way to put it. Uh, but, yeah, I, as you can see, I come up with a bunch of uh, real treasures, too, real, real gems hidden in the dirt. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that concludes today's installment of list week of my uh, 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. I hope you enjoyed it, and that's it for this video. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.